This is from the Keys of Enoch. Uh, J.J. Hurtak talks about the fire letters. Have you everyone, anyone's read the Keys of Enoch here? One person, very good. So, <laughs> okay, this is basically Wilkeshire, England. There's, I would say, 90% of the world's crop circles are from this really small little area near Stonehenge in a prairie. Uh, this is it. Um, these are all basically farmlands, and this is um, a town called Marlborough, and this is a town called Khan. And I went there in 2008, but this is about 12 miles stretch, and all these are fields, and this is where 90% of the world's crop circles are in the fields from Con to Marlborough. So, this is Avebury, which is, so Avebury, in that whole area that I just showed, has all these old sites, these old megalithic sites, like Stonehenge, and this is the Avebury Circle. So these are ancient sites that people have been worshipping in for a long time. And so there might be something in the earth energies that have tra attracted the crop circles there. And this is what the Keys of Light said in 1983, that the children of light took to the ancient megalithic sites to see the round numbers and the calculations of star mathematics, which are part of the greater astrophysical geometry. So that's what... And this is the stone circle at Avebury. So crop circles are drawn to the stone circle at Avebury. But maybe I'll just go to this little clip here and tell you why I think, uh, or what my research shows, why crop circles are actually um, drawn to that particular area. And this was an interview that I produced with Nancy Talbert, who's another crop circle researcher who's been going to that area in Wilkeshire since the 1980s. And this is her talking to a woman named um, Patricia Hill. In southern England, of course, you have an aquifer, a chalk aquifer. Yeah. And John measured the ground electrical charge in southern England over the summer. And as the aquifer lowers, as the uh, water table lowers, the ground electric charge has increased. And curiously, the number of crop circles increase also as the summer progresses. Furthermore, this electric charge is greatest near the edge of the aquifer. And lo and behold, many of the crop circles occur at the edges of the aquifers. So it's, tan it's tantalizing. It suggests a connection. Well, I'll show you. There's these stones. These are the ancient stones that are standing. These are actually older than Stonehenge. There's still people going and doing ceremonies in these stones. There's this place called Silbury Hill, which is the largest man-made structure in Europe. This is not a natural mound. This is actually hollow inside. It's made with layers of organic and inorganic material. And if you know what Wilhelm Reich's organ boxes were made up to house the life force, they're made out of levels of inorganic and organic material. So this was like a giant organ generator, which, you, which the ancient people would charge their seeds, because seeds were very important for the farming season. So they would put seeds on top of the hill there, and they'd be more fertile. And it was also a fertility. Uh, uh, when you say inorganic, you mean stones? Yes, yeah, stones then. versus living material. Yeah. Okay. So what are the layers? What layers? What layers? It could be any layer of like some vegetable or uh -huh. grass with an inorganic layer so of stones. Like wood and, and stone. Well, wood be living, yeah, wood and then stone and then wood other, and other stone. things. So there were about, in Oregon boxes, about seven layers of that. But that's another subject. So, I just want to show people that in the land there, there's the topsoil, and under the topsoil there's this chalk. And so they have a lot of these white horse, horses in the mountains, uh, or the hills there. And these were signs of the goddess culture, these white horses. So the chalk, and then underneath the chalk are those aquifers. So the chalk is it's really chalky, but they have this layer on top where they grow their crops on. So there might be something in the fact that the, the water and the chalk resonate with higher density, that they can make more complex designs there, because the most complex designs of the crop circles are found there in southern England. And there's, so I just threw this in because people have taken these designs and made art from them. Here's like an overall thing of some of these crop circles that I'll go through. And I might go through them fast because I have it from like 1990 to this year. 
But um, so you can see these people have taken these designs and created beautiful images with them. But again, they're all based on sacred geometry. So, um, Alan, are yes. there any sloppy ones? I mean, yes, I'll show them. And the sloppy ones are obviously man-made. Well, there was one on the 25th of April. That's yeah. pretty sloppy. Yes. Now, this, this, oh, we already had one? We had a bunch. But let me just give you the overall understanding. So, some, most of them are made out of sacred geometry. Some of them have these mathematical sequences. Some of them like are signifying electrical or mechanical designs, like they're telling us who's ever doing this to make this instrument. Some are just sacred symbols of the world. Some have ge ge genetic codes in them. Some have planetary configurations. Or once in a while, they get, you get these standalone circles, these unique designs. So, um, Oh, and then there's, of course, the thing that if you tell someone there's these crop circles, everyone thinks, oh yeah, there were these guys that came out and said, we did it. You know, these guys said, you know, after 15 years, they said, we, we did, Doug and Dave. Doug and Dave. Doug and Dave. So everyone knows, this is in September 9, 1901, the man who conned the, wor conned the world. And so because these guys were paid 10,000 pounds, by this English newspaper come out and say that they did it, that's what most of the world now believes, at least these guys making these crop circles because someone said, hey, I did it. So everyone can relax now because if you think that there really are these aliens leaving us markings and trying to communicate with us, and if you're a pretty normal person, that would create a lot of stress in your system. It really is. It's stressful to think that there's UFOs out there. Because it means your own little safe little world is going to be shaken up. So most people would rather not, that's why, you know, it's not everyone in this room, but, you know, there's a lot of people. But what that's why most people, drinking? what's that? What kind of beer were they drinking? They were drinking some kind of beer, but <laughs> it, it is stressful to think that there's more to reality that, than you can know. Just by, like, watching those two videos, the gorilla and the color changing, it shows you how much we're missing. And if we were just to take in a little more of reality, it would shake up a lot of things. So most people would prefer not to have UFOs and crops. So, but here they are demonstrating their simple designs. And when Colin Andrews asked them to do the more complex designs, they said, oh, well, we didn't do those. <laughs> you know, I talked to a farmer last year because I was out there with uh, Francine and Paul and I met one of the farmers and he said, yeah, we confronted Doug and Dave and Doug and Dave said, we did not make any crop circles in your fields. And, and the farmer said, well, who did it and who's been doing it for the last 20 years? You know, but and anyway, one of these guys died and the other guy's not doing it. But Colin Andrews brought up an interesting point a couple of weeks ago. Colin Andrews is really one of the original researchers. He said... Doug and Dave actually didn't know why they were doing it. And he thought that maybe, subconsciously, they were being told to create these symbols anyway, on some level. So, that was Doug and Dave. These are what the fields look like. The, um, it looks like it's stomped down, but you can see it's in a spiral. There's a little orb in this one. Uh, the, green thing? The, green? the green thing was a plant that was left standing. Oh. I don't know, sometimes plants grow faster. Um, it's not like it's stopped. When you're in the field, it's like it grows over the wheat. It's like the, the wheat starts to grow curved. So most of these aren't broken. They've just been flattened by some kind of force. But also bent. Bent, yeah. yeah. I have a couple. Oh, you pass them around. Down. Yeah. This is what they these look these like. From last year, but I, I had these, some of my caddy. These aren't the best ones. Yeah. But. But they are, they start to bend, and, and some, some people think it's a quick infrared flash, high heat, and, and it's gone. So, because most of these crop circles are made like in an instant. It's like somebody's looking at the field, it's not there, they turn their head, and it could be there, you know? Some people I was with saw flashes of light. How long did it take with Devin Dave? Devin Dave, and also a National Geographic team, took like three days during the day to do like a simple crop circle. So National Geographic, if you look at the NOAA special about crop circles, they hired a team to do a very simple circle and it took them three days to do it. And these are done overnight. 